We've visited many obscure historical sites on this channel to date, but this week we have a first. This week we are looking for a hedge, a black hedge, and it is at least 1,121 years old. We're in the Buckinghamshire Chilterns, and we have the perfect guest to join us this week with our investigation. I'm delighted to welcome Allotment Fox to the channel. Hello, you fairer. And if that isn't exciting enough for you, we'll also be looking at the mesmerising idea that these Chiltern Hills were a home to the British resistance, a British enclave holding out against the Saxons. It's no wonder they were a bit skittish about the Romano British. And if you're one of the two people who've brought my record on the Buy Me A Coffee Shop, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're probably wondering how we can be so specific to say that a black hedge can be at least 1,121 years old. Now, it's nothing to do with the sort of mumbo jumbo of counting the number of species in a hedge, let me tell you that. Except we're going to citizen science. We don't leave it to the academics to do the basic stuff like pace out 30 yards and count a few trees. That's the whole point of YouTube antiquarians, getting out in the field and doing science. And that's the moment where Allotment Fox seized control of my video and I learnt that we would in fact be counting hedgerow species as well. I really enjoyed making this with Tom. He's a fantastic chap and I've admired his work for ages now. He's a self-trained expert amateur in Old English and Saxon boundary charters. And that's what we're using here to find the Black Hedge, which is mentioned in a charter of 903, the time of Edward the Elder, bingo, I can reuse this overlay from last week. Now this Monk's Risborough boundary charter is unusual in that it was rewritten from memory in the late 10th century following a fire, which Allotment Fox noted as highly convenient. It describes the land bounds of this chap, put it on the screen. I'm not going to try and say that in front of Allotment Fox. We've had some debate about it, but according to Heppel, that uh, sunken Holloway m marks the line of King Street in the boundary. And now Allotment Fox and myself are heading up. We're actually on the Saxon boundary, if they've got that right. It might not be on this side, it might be on this side. But it talks about both estates digging a, a ditch to show the boundary together so that, you know, good fences make good neighbours. Anyway, we're not achieving anything. <laughs> we're now walking alongside a hedge that Heppel and Doggett have as the Saxon boundary. As ever, Allotman Fox has his doubts about that, but it's time for me to be sent back to school. We're going to count the species in the hedge to see if we can date it. It's all a bit chaotic, but it's going to be included because it's authentic. I, th I think this is the Ra Hedge, which is, um, or the Ra Hedgia, uh, which means the Ra, Ra is uh, Old English for roe deer, and uh, hedge is obviously a hedge. Now, if this is the case, let's see if we can work out how old it is. So what, what I need you to do, Darren, is to, is to mark out 30 paces and then make a list of all the trees you can find. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine, I'll do that. So Allotment Fox has now got me undertaking something called Citizen's Science. Uh, we are, you know, he has some doubt as to whether this uh, line that we've been following is the line of the Risborough Charter of 903, but we're gonna now do an experiment uh, to see if we can add any credence to that argument. So what have I got to do then, uh, 16, Tom? 17, nothing, 18. That's 20, don't let me forget that. You can. So, yeah, you've got to bring something over here to mark the, the 30. I've got to bring something over there to mark that. 30. Right, OK, let me get yeah, but leave something there to, yeah. So we need 20. something there. I'm doing as I'm told today. So you need a marker here. Yeah. Right. And then what? Then I, uh, do you want to do the next 30? I'll do so the I, ne I could do this lot. I'll do the next 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so put something down on the ground, yeah. Uh, so we've got two, and then we'll both of us count up um, how many species of, uh, of tree we can find. 
And remember, I want to know exactly the names in Latin. And what we're now doing is we're going to count species. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Just and I've got to remember the names in Latin. In Latin and write, write, write them down and then we'll average them out and then, uh, you know, we'll have a good sample. Right. Hawthorne. This is really confusing, but uh, so a lot of the foxes down there in the first 30 yards, counted species. I've got to do the same here now in Latin, apparently. So that's one, two, three. Oh, I'm meant to be writing it down. Should I include blackberries? Right, uh, Tom, I've got a problem because I found that I can't actually identify very many species, but I have got, I think, six for my section of my 30 yard section. What have you got? I've got eight, um, which I make it as, uh, so that's 880, 910, 910 years old. All oh, right, so that's, I thought it was a, as simple as one species for 100 years, but there's an equation, is there? Yeah, so it, what it is, is 110 times the number of species and then add 30. So what did you make that, nine? 910 years old. Right, OK, so we're not far off, are we? We're not we? far we're off. We're not far off. No, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed that. The thing is, having, having worked out there was a discrepancy between mine and Darren's figures. My I've work to, was checked. I've got to check his figures. Typical, nobody who knows me will be surprised by such control freakery. And there was, in fact, exactly the same as mine, eight species. So that makes it a year, uh, this is 910 years old. This 910. Age. Fantastic, and this is the Hooper, the Hooper equation, which is which is proper Scientology. So my work has been checked, and I have been found to be deficient. Uh, I was out by, was I out by two species? So the second section is the same in terms of age by the Hooper equation yep. as the first section. It's not quite old enough for our charter boundary, though. But I would say they would still be speaking Old English when this was this was laid. And we also, we were looking at the, the bank along the, the inside. Because it's the level is dropped on both sides, we can say that is a made bank deliberately uh, as a, a dividing um, enclosure, a dividing boundary. Uh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes even, counting species in a hedge. And it was the best fun I've had for ages. Allotment Fox was absolutely right. It's exactly the sort of thing that amateur antiquarians should be doing. After that, we followed the charter boundary for a little while longer before branching off. So we were cutting sort of across country to drop down to a point on its outward leg where we hopefully would find the legendary Black Hedge. I, I have got a zoom, not on the GoPro, but my Pocket 3 has got a zoom. Uh, well, sort you're, of. You're just, yeah, you're just halving the pixels on your sensor, aren't you? So it's not really a zoom. Filming with Allotment Fox, I'm having so much fun, it's really difficult to concentrate. I've lost track of where I'm meant to be. So I'll just recap what we've done. We've followed the line, what we think is the line, as much as we possibly can, of this 903 Saxon Charter, the Risborough Charter. We're now just shy of a place called Parslow's Hillock in the woods and we have hit the line of the black hedge itself. Black hedge because it had black thorn in it. Now, I'm glad we did the species counting earlier at that other bit of hedge because it is really thinned out. It's not liking being in this commercial uh, forest, but uh, let's have a look at it. So there it is. That is the black hedge, which we know was here 1,121 years ago, clearly. If it was already here, then it's actually older than that. But you can see it running down there, the black hedge. And in a moment, I'm going to have a go at reading the relevant bit of the charter uh, in Old English. So stay tuned for that. OK, so Tom, as somebody who's looked at endless Saxon charters and followed them on the ground, how unusual is it to find a hedge? This black, we've got the black hedge here. How unusual is it to find a hedge that you absolutely know that's the one that is referred to in the charter? Well, why do you need me? I told you this yesterday. Yeah, that was on the phone, you know, for them, for our friends uh, in there. Okay. The, um, it's quite rare because they're not the sort of things that are marked on a, on a map with a name. So villages and farmhouses, they all tend to have a name on a, on a, on a modern map. 
So it's really hard to uh, place them. But here we can, we can, it's, it's quite clear. It's, it is, um, it, it, it is reasonably unique. You, so you do see that there's a, there's a bit of a problem with the fact that there are several words for hedge in, in Old English, and some of them started out as meaning hedge and went on to mean something else. Um, uh, so it, it, it's very hard to see whether or not it'll be a hedge at all. But this is, A, this is a hedge, and B, it is where it should be. And it's known, it has been historically known as the black hedge because of the black thorn that was in it. Well, they say, they say that. Yeah, is but that they, right? Do, they, do know. they know? This is the thing. So what is, it, what is the earth like? Let's do some more citizen science. Let's do some yeah, digging. Yeah, let's do some digging, digging now. Come on. After that, we followed the track down to the pub. It's nearly time for my reading. As we go down here, you'll see the remnants of the black hedge and its ditch on the right hand side. <laughs> We're going to get your uh, radio I've got it. several kilos on my back, which is making it a bit harder. Oh. OK, so the time has come for me to attempt to read the relevant part of the charter uh, in Old English. And uh, I'm just going to ask uh, Allotment Fox here to be, um, to be kind. But he here goes. Vicent the Lond Yamero. Arrest them, Garan, Inan, the Blacken Hegian. Of their air Hegian, neither Nan, non air Fallen, Brooker. One second. Simon. Hello, it's, it's Simon Roper on the phone. Ah, right. uh, mate, I can't, I can't do anything about it. He's, he just won't stop. Sorry, mate. I'd, I'd, I, you know. I, I take it I've failed Sorry. the test again. I have failed the test. OK, so that's how not to do it. Let's, uh, let's watch the professional in action. This sint the land gamero, arist of them garan in on the blackan hedjan. Of their hedjan, neither in on thona fulan broke. And that's without my glasses on. OK, so we've just done the hooper test on uh, the next bit of the Black Hedge, uh, just down from the Pink and Lily pub, or Lily and Pink, I can't remember which it is. And uh, Allotment Fox, what have we come to this time? So we had 910 on the previous one. Where are we at now? Well, we have nine species in this stretch, this 30 yard stretch. That means it's 1,020 years old. So we are nearly there, aren't we? Just, yeah, it's good stuff. I'm yeah. very, very pleased. Fantastic. It's good that my viewers love ditches. I'm now stood in the ditch of the Black Hedge. Oh, it's a nice ditch. Where's Tweedy? Let's get a bottle of champagne. Well, we've finished our exploration of the Saxon uh, boundary now, and we're turning back. It's been amazing. It really has felt to me like we're touching history. And although I suggested it was mumbo jumbo near the beginning, this counting the species thing, it's turned out to be sort of incredibly accurate, I think, or a good, in you know, a really good indication. So we're heading back now. And uh, as the next part of our treat, completely unrelated to what we're talking about this week, we're actually in a fantastic stretch of Grimm's Ditch. What a great day I had with Allotment Fox. He went against the current convention and thought that this particular stretch of Grimm's Ditch was Roman. I couldn't argue with that. We had a good discussion about the impact of intensive farming. Before I got us lost, resulting in an unnecessary descent and reascent of the escarpment. On the way home, I tried to get a shot of where the black hedge breaks free from the woods. You might just be able to see it over there. Oh, and I must apologise, because of all of this, I didn't get time to do the bit about the British enclave, so we'll save that for another video for another day. I hope you enjoyed that and I'd like to thank Allotment Fox for joining us today and helping us out. Please check out his channel, it is great. No, no, thank you, thank you for, for, for uh, bringing me out. And if there's anybody out there who would like to do a joint video that knows how to read a map or can phone me now and tell me, tell us where we are. And knows how great. to count species as well. Yeah. <laughs> I failed just about every test that uh, Tom has set me today, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> But I think we've had fun. We would like to crack on now because we are genuinely lost. So please yeah. like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Right, any idea where we go? This way. That way. <laughs> Bits of nonsense. <laughs>